The Nakajima G8N is Japan's top bomber in War Thunder. Let's see what it's got. As World War II dragged on, it became obvious to the Japanese military leadership that they desperately needed a long-range heavy bomber to replace some of their older designs from the 1930s that were still in service, and to carry a heavier payload than the G4M. The performance requirements were finalized towards the end of 1943, and the Nakajima company was tasked to develop the new bomber. This new plane, designated G8N, was mostly conventional in terms of late World War II four-engine bomber design, with turbo-supercharged engines, powered gun turrets, tricycle landing gear, and a glazed nose. However, like all Japanese bomber designs, some sacrifices were made in order to achieve the range requirements, and its overall payload was still a bit lower compared to Allied heavy bombers, and it was actually closer to Allied medium bombers like the B-25, the Vickers Wellington, or the IL-4. It is notable, however, that its payload does compare well to Allied heavy bombers like the B-24 or B-17 if those Allied bombers were kitted out to fly at maximum range. However, the G-8N had no provision for carrying heavier bomb loads shorter distances. This was a limitation common to Japanese bombers at the time. The G-8N also carried significantly improved defensive guns compared to earlier Japanese bombers with a set of 20mm cannon turrets combined with 13mm machine gun turrets. The first prototype of the G-8N didn't fly out until the end of 1944, and Japan's situation had basically collapsed by that point, so progress was very slow. Only four flight-worthy prototypes were completed by the end of the war, although none saw any combat service that is confirmed by reputable sources, and the project was abandoned in June of 1945. Overall, the G-8N was actually one of the highest performance bombers of the Second World War, behind only the B-29 on paper, but it simply arrived too late to have any impact at all on the conflict. What we get in War Thunder is the G8N1 Renzan, a long-range bomber in rank 4 of the Japanese tech tree with a battle rating of 6.0. As of making this video, this is the final bomber in the Japanese tech tree. This plane has a crew of 8, including 6 gunners, manning a combination of 20mm and 13mm turrets, which gives this thing an incredibly strong defensive setup. Being a World War II prop bomber, it doesn't have any advanced features, but it does still get a conventional optical bomb sight. The bomb load is, unfortunately, somewhat unimpressive. You can take conventional bombs in 6, 250, or 800 kilogram sizes, with a load of 3 800s being your heaviest option. The 3 800s and the 1860s are enough to take out a base in RB, but the 8250s won't quite finish the job and are more suited to attacking AI ground units, so keep that in mind. Also, in a recent patch, this plane got a few different AP bombs. These are the ones with the blue tips. Yeah, these are for attacking ships, so you don't want to use them for anything else. But if you are attacking ships with this, these are the ones you want to take, since the plane can't have any torpedoes. In terms of flight performance, this is a huge four-engine prop bomber, but it's one of the best. The main thing to know is that its performance is skewed towards high-altitude flight. The bad news for you is that you can't take advantage of that in War Thunder matches very often, and sometimes when you can, it's just not going to matter. The rate of climb is pretty average at low to medium altitude, but actually improves up above 5,000 meters or so, all the way up to its ceiling height around 11,000. But again, in 99% of War Thunder matches, you never actually go up that high. The same deal with its speed. At higher altitude, some prop fighters are going to have trouble catching this thing in level flight, but down low, at more practical altitudes, things even out, and the plane is going to top out a bit below 500 kilometers an hour. In terms of maneuverability and defensive flying, well, it's a big four-engine prop bomber, and it can rip its wings off pretty easily in snap turns if you're not careful. 
it's only rated for 3 Gs before you start getting warnings. And if you're above 300 kilometers an hour, you need to be very delicate on the controls in order to avoid structural failures. Amusingly, this thing actually has combat flaps, but the occasion to use them won't come up very often, and even then, it's usually only for a few seconds. Something noteworthy, though, is that this plane has a really high rip speed for a big lumbery bomber like this. This means that you can be slightly more aggressive when you're diving back to your airfield to land after a bombing run, and it actually makes a pretty big difference in a lot of matches. In my own testing, the wings won't rip off until about 750 kilometers an hour, which is insanely high for a big prop bomber like this, and it's actually higher than some fighters. In air battles, the G8N1 is generally a good bomber, but its limited payload can hold it back sometimes. You can take out a base on most maps with the 800 kilogram or 60 kilogram bombs at least, but just barely, and you're frequently going to find someone else beats you to the target by half a second, or some jackass dives under you to steal it after you've already dropped your bombs, so be on the lookout for that stuff. The medium loadout of the eight 250 kilogram bombs isn't enough to take out a base, and it's usually best to use them on AI ground targets, as this loadout strikes a balance between quantity of bombs and individual blast radius, so that your drops won't need to be laser accurate. This bomber's hidden strength, though, is unquestionably the gun turrets. The G8N1 has reasonably good turret coverage, with only a few blind spots, and its defensive guns punch pretty hard. In fact, one of my favorite things to do with this plane is to fly in and drop my bombs, and then cruise around at altitude to try to intercept enemy bombers returning from their bombing run, and gunship them out with my turrets before going back to land. In most bombers, this is kind of a dumb meme tactic, but with the cannons on this thing and its good flight performance at altitude, it actually works better than you might expect. Even if you won't always get an immediate kill, if you get hits, you can do heavy damage and sometimes get kill credit a few minutes later when they crash out trying to land. Flying this thing out for close air support is, as you might expect, not always super effective. Big four-engine bombers are incredibly vulnerable to player-controlled SPAA, and getting accurate drops against moving player targets from higher altitude is almost a non-starter. Still, you can occasionally get some kills when flying close air support, and the loadout of the smaller bombs is paradoxically kinda good at that. But really, this plane's role isn't in close air support, and even though Japan's CAS options are limited in this BR, it's probably better to bring a lower tier dive bomber up instead of a four engine heavy bomber like this. Unless you're just goofing around, in which case, go nuts with the 20mm cannon turrets. Visually, I think the G8N is one of the best looking bombers in the game. You get a huge selection of paint jobs, and most of them are pretty good. The 3D model for the plane is very well detailed, and overall, this is just a great looking aircraft. Landing the G8N is easier than a lot of other big prop bombers. The tricycle landing gear simplifies things a bit, its combat flaps can actually be useful in lining up a final approach, and its relatively high rip speed allows you to come down from altitude a lot easier than similar planes. Try to target your landing for around 180 kilometers an hour if you can, and you can safely drop gear at a little over 300 and flaps at around 265. The cockpit? No, it's another low poly placeholder, like a lot of other bombers. The visibility is awful and the detail is crap. This is a terrible cockpit and I do not suggest this plane for VR. Wrapping up with the G8N1. This plane has very effective defensive guns. It's got a high wing rip speed for a prop bomber. It's easy to land, which matters for bombers like this. And its overall flight performance is comparatively good. However, its overall bomb load isn't impressive. And like most heavy bombers, it's got a very low G limit. The final verdict on the G8N1 is that this is easily one of the best prop bombers in War Thunder. Its position at BR-6 
usually means that you're not going to have to worry about jet interceptions, and your defensive firepower is a good deterrent to fighters that are closer to your speed. The only thing that really holds this plane back is its unimpressive bomb load. As always, thanks for watching.